Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today I'm going to do something a little different for me. Uh, I have next to me a Monoprice Ultimate 2 printer. This arrived about a week ago in a very big box weighing over 40 pounds. And with the assistance of my son-in-law, we wrestled it downstairs to the Dr. Vax lab so I could do a review. This printer was sent to me at no charge by Monoprice, specifically so that I could do a review for them. So I need to disclose that I did not pay for this printer. All other printers I've reviewed in the past, I paid for. This is a very interesting printer, and my first impression and my second impression were completely different. So stay tuned, and let's learn something together. Monoprice has been shipping an Ultimate printer for quite a while now. In general, it was a 150 by 150 millimeter printer that got good reviews, and it was a rebranded WANHU W-A-N-H-A-O Duplicator 6 printer. Now, this printer looks pretty much the same except it's fully enclosed and some of the specs are a little different. The print's area is now 200 millimeters by 150 on the print bed. That extra 50 millimeters makes a big difference. Uh, this print would not have been possible on the original Ultimate printer, but it appears it's made by a different manufacturer. Uh, there are multiple contract manufacturers that make printers to specifically to be rebranded. This is now made by WeDo, W-E-E-D-O, and it's listed on their website as the WeDo 150S, except it's a little different. On the website, the picture has a fan in the inside and the back. This printer does not. At first, that was a concern, but as I go through the review, I'll point out why I'm not concerned about that at all. So this is the new Monoprice Ultimate 2 printer. Now, in the box are some very interesting things. There's a roll of masking tape, and you quickly learn that the build plate is glass. Very interesting. It fits in with magnets, but there are also guides along the edges. It's in there solid, and it's covered with regular masking tape. There's an all-purpose glue stick. You'll see in a minute that I prefer to use Magigoo, but there's an all-purpose glue stick in the box. There's an SD card reader. Mine didn't work. Not a big deal. I have lots of SD card readers. And there's a spanner, a wrench, and it's a very unusual size. It has one end that's 5.5 millimeters. Not what I normally find in my socket sets. And then there are a bunch of wires. Why are there a bunch of wires? Well, these appear to be replacement cables for some of the cables along the side. Now, overall, the cable management in this printer, when we look inside, is really good. It's really well done. But I guess these are likely to fray over time, so they include some spares. Finally, they include the best quality paint scraper. It looks like a instrument you would use in your kitchen uh, inside the box. Um, and this is to help get the prints off that masking tape. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, what about the specs for this printer? As I mentioned, it's the print surface area, which is um, a sheet of glass. Now, mine, you can't see the glassing and the masking tape anymore because I've done one minor upgrade. I took and I adhered a sheet of build tech on top of the glass instead of the masking tape, so I won't have to change it as rapidly. And I do use Magigoo with the build tech to make it very easy to get prints on and off. This weighs a lot. This is probably absolutely flat. And it fits into the printer very comfortably and nice and tightly. And it's 150 by 200. That extra 50 millimeters, as I mentioned, is very, very nice. It is fully enclosed. The hot end is rated to 250 degrees centigrade. 
little lower than I'd like on a high-end printer. This is a $550 printer. The fans on the hot end, however, are some of the largest fans I've seen in a non-professional grade high-end manufacturing printer. Uh, these are larger than any other printer I have here. And we'll see as we go through the prints, that makes a difference. There's a filament runout detector in the back of the printer. The reels of filament load inside the printer, and I was able to load full one kilogram reels. Standard, this is a uh, Hatchbox PLA in here right now. I was able to load standard filament reels into this printer. So those are the overall specifications. Um, solid, one additional one I missed, auto bed leveling. So solid, auto bed leveling, filament runout, glass build plate, all metal, hot end. It's a direct extruder printer. There is no Bowden tube. So very solid specs. $550, maybe. So then I went to make my first print. Now, they ship with two different versions of software with something called WII Builder. Um, I loaded that I have an old Dell laptop. Runs really slow. I did load that on there. I wasn't impressed. The graphics resolution wasn't great. So I also loaded Cura that ships on the SD card onto this printer. And I loaded it onto my Mac. It's Cura 3.3, so not the absolute latest version, but a relatively current version. Um, and that's what I made all of these prints with. The first print I went to run was a print on the SD card. Now, after loading the filament, and the filament loads all the way in the back. See this picture here? It's a little hard to get that filament in. But after loading the filament through the filament detector, pushing to the top of the extruder, it's a direct extruder, going to the front panel and saying load filament, I printed this print. Wow. This was spectacular. I can barely, if at all, see the layer lines. There are no artifacts that I can find at all, except for one minor seam. This is a beautiful print. But the prints you get on an SD card are usually pretty darn good. You're never sure how they prepared them, how they, how they sliced them. So I went for the hardest print in my family of prints, and that's the AutoCAD Kickstarter print. And this is the best Kickstarter AutoCAD calibration print I have ever printed. Now, there is very slight ringing on the sides. This is printed at 60 millimeters per second. I probably could eliminate that by slowing it down a little bit. There are numbers um, all over this print. They are extremely legible, the best I've seen. And I have never, ever printed one of these where the towers were this perfect with no stringing. Now, this was using their Cura profile with no changes. The dimensional accuracy is extremely good. There is some slight drooping on these angled surfaces. And look at this video for a minute. You'll see the printhead was actually hitting the top of the print here. Um, I believe by slowing this down, fine-tuning temperature a little bit, I could eliminate that completely. So this is a spectacular print. Next, to further test stringing, I printed this torture test of a printer test. It also is near perfect, just really beautiful. I did another review of a Quiddy XSmart printer, uh, a little less expensive printer, about a $400 printer, which by the way is an extremely easy to use printer, a wonderful printer. It could not print this successfully. So then I went for something a little different. I printed this vase in ColorFab XT. Now, the only other printer I print with where I print ColorFab XT is my Prusa MK3. And the reason is this prints hot. I normally print this at about 260 degrees Celsius on the Prusa. Unfortunately, this printer is rated topping out at 250 degrees. So I set it up for 245 degrees. I left everything else the same and it was clearly under extruding. But more concerning, slightly about maybe five minutes into the print, I got a max temp air. 
So that verifies that this firmware has maximum temperature, temperature runout protection turned on, um, but it shut down the print. So that concerned me because I had set the extruder to 245 degrees. Now I had found on this printer that the temperature tends to run hot. So I went back to the Monoprice website just to see if anybody had asked about it, and there was a firmware upgrade. Actually, it was quite a number of upgrades. I think I was at maybe 1.6 or 1.7. This was 2.01, I believe. I updated the firmware. I restarted the print. I left the temperature at 245, but I lowered the speed to 40 millimeters per second because the other thing I saw on the first print was it was under extruding a bit. The result was probably the best clear vase I've ever printed. Um, it's really quite clear, quite see-through. Um, I don't see any defects at all. Uh, this is really a beautiful, beautiful print. So now I've printed in high temperature plastic. I've printed using the filament they supplied. Uh, this calibration text was printed in Hatchbox PLA. And so I decided to test something else a little bit harder, but I really didn't do it right. I loaded some ColorFab wood fill into this printer and I didn't tune a profile at all. I just selected the PLA profile because the temperature is about the same. This print, I would say, failed. It looks very nice, except that some of these features are clearly failing where the filament did not adhere properly. Um, if I looked at this printing, I saw some of that same effect where the print head was hitting part of the print. So I have to do some Z-hop tuning to get this to print. I have to slow it down. It was at 60 millimeters per second and probably fine tune the temperature. But it is clear to me this is possible on this printer. This particular print did not print. Then I went to my China 3D gold, silky gold filament that I really love um, and beautiful. Absolutely a beautiful print. And then finally, for fun, I printed this dragon. Now, I mentioned earlier that this dragon, which prints as three separate parts, I printed the two wings together and then the body. The body would not have fit on a 150 by 150 print bed. On the 200 by 150 print bed, it fit just fine. Here's something interesting to show you. The Cura profile that they ship with this printer has a raft turned on for every print. I thought that was unnecessary for this print. So when I remembered and I saw the raft printing, I stopped the print, I turned it off, I restarted it. Uh, this print was beautiful. It adhered to the build tech, in my case, print bed uh, without any problem. But I wanted to show you this raft. This might be the best first layer I have ever printed. It is spectacular, spectacular. And why is the quality so very, very good on this printer? Well, I believe the quality is so good because it is fully enclosed, taking out environmental effects, but then it has these massive fans that are able to cool the filament properly. In some other fully enclosed or semi-enclosed printers, I did a review recently of a Quiddy XSmart printer Really easy to use printer, great beginner's printer, a little pricey, but so easy to use, it's worth the $400. But this printer is very different. Every decision they made on this printer appears to be made to produce the highest quality prints. It has a glass print surface, very, very smooth. It has these massive fans. The nozzle is all metal. It's a direct extruder. So this is really a remarkable printer from the point of view of quality. To wrap up this review, do I recommend this printer? Absolutely. Here are the constraints. It only has a 200 by 150 by 150 print area. Uh, that means you can print larger prints at about the same quality on a Prusa. However, the Prusa MK3 or MK3S now is $1,000 fully assembled. This is $550 fully assembled. So if print area is not your constraint, 
This will give you, in my opinion, the same or better quality as that $1,000 printer. The other minor constraint is you can only go up to 250 degrees Celsius. Now, as I showed you with my ColorFab XT print, um, that allows you to print pretty sophisticated materials. However, if you need to print something at 280 degrees, ASA as an example, a new material from Prusa uh, does require 272, 180 degrees. Nylons probably will be difficult to print, if not impossible on this printer. But for PLAs, PETG, ABS, most of the color fab filled filaments, wow, this is a great printer. So I highly recommend this printer for people that are looking for a fully assembled printer that will print spectacular quality. How am I gonna use this printer? I'm literally gonna put this in my shop. Because it's fully enclosed, I'm not so worried about dust getting into it. I will cover it with something when I'm doing heavy duty woodworking, but it'll be off in the corner printing quietly. Fully enclosed, does that make it quiet? Last comment, not really, because the fans are relatively loud on this printer. So overall, a great printer I highly recommend. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. This sort of feel fits in the middle of my range of printers from a $180 mono price Mini Select, which is a great starter printer, to my $1,000 Prusa. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, recommend it to other people, put a link to this video on other sites where people might be interested. Thanks, have a great day, and let's continue to learn things together.